Hi there, and welcome to my Itty Bitty Chapel. My name is Patty Chafee, and I'm the Community Minister at Niantic Community Church. I'm also a spiritual director and an expressive arts facilitator. Our Itty Bitty Chapel is a few moments offered midweek to relax, refresh, and reflect on a spiritual word or phrase. It's usually filmed in or near a sacred space within my home called the Itty Bitty Chapel, and our candles here are lit to remind us of the presence of spirit within and around us. If you're so inclined and would like to light a candle in your sacred space during our time together, you can pause the video and do that now. Our word for reflection today is quiet. Quiet. Author Sarah Bombronic reflects on the influence a little quiet can have. She writes, New Year's Day, a fresh start, a new chapter in life waiting to be written, new questions to be asked, embraced, and loved, answers to be discovered, and then lived in this transformative year of delight and self-discovery. Today, carve out a quiet interlude for yourself in which to dream, pen in hand. Only dreams give birth to change. A new year, a new chapter on the horizon. For many of us, January just feels like a time for reflection, for slowing down and asking, what's next? What will this new year bring? Sometimes we find ourselves in a place we didn't bargain for, a time of change we didn't ask for, a time to ask questions and to take action to seek answers. And the only way we can really hear is to settle in to a deep quiet, the kind that stirs the soul and inspires the mind. I like this invitation to a quiet interlude, I like that word interlude, and found myself with just such an experience recently. I usually ask for a word about this time of year to guide me into the new year. Sometimes I create a collage to help it appear. I journal almost daily and sometimes look for it there. A friend has been asking me, do you have your word yet? <laughs> I always have a word by now, but I got a little frustrated that she kept asking, not at her, but at myself for not making time to settle in, ask and listen to what unfolds. Not in that area of life anyway. <laughs> I need to work on that, but I've been busy. So with my friend's question in the back of my mind, I found myself one day sitting in my favorite chair, looking beyond the Christmas tree and its little white twinkle lights to see snow falling in the early morning hours. It was mesmerizing. I watched it for a while, captivated. It's not like I hadn't seen snowfall before. I'm a born and bred New Englander and proud of it. <laughs> But it was just so beautiful. I couldn't help myself but stick my head out the door to see it firsthand. There wasn't a sound anywhere. It's as if the earth, at least my little piece of it, just stood still. Absolute silence. As someone with a substantial hearing impairment, I have a significant appreciation for quiet. Even when I wear my hearing aids, in certain settings, I will take them off to turn life down. It gets too noisy sometimes. I get overwhelmed with noise easily, having developed that appreciation for quiet over so many years. So to look outside and experience such deep quiet was remarkable to me. I went back in the house to warm up and return to my chair. The snow continued to fall, continued to speak to me. 
and I debated about going into the, out into the frigid air. I wanted to capture the moment in some way, not sure why. I gave in to the inclination and ran into the chapel to get my tripod and camera. I grabbed a sweatshirt to put over my pajamas and went out onto the porch in the middle of a snowstorm to capture what felt like God's grace showering upon us. But man, was it cold out there. It didn't take long and I was happy to return to the warmth and comfort of our home. But as I stood out there for those few minutes, I wondered if there was ever anything more quiet, more deeply silent, more gentle, more beautiful than falling snow. I was moved by these words of Henry Nowen. Solitude is very different from a, from a time out from our busy lives. Solitude is the very ground from which community grows. Whenever we pray alone, study, read, write, or simply spend quiet time away from the places where we interact with each other directly, we are potentially opened for a deeper intimacy with each other. So the act of making time for retreat, for time alone, for quiet in our lives, opens us to a deeper intimacy with each other in community. I had not really thought of the impact quiet time has in a broader sense. I knew the value individually for sure, but his words opened my mind to the value of it for others. How do you feel about taking time for yourself? Embracing quiet, watching snowfall? How does that kind of nurturing feel to you? Nowen's words helped me to see that interior soul work, even something as simple as the stillness of quiet and solitude can have on an impact on our external lives and the way we are in community with others. All this coming from watching snowfall. God's grace is abundant, isn't it? I hope my word shows up soon. I'll be listening. I keep you in prayer every day of this grace-filled new year. And if this message spoke to you in some way, feel free to share it with others. And until next time, may God bless you in every way you need. Namaste.